Hello and welcome to The Clan Show, your one-stop shop for all clan fans. We're currently out of our usual residence, i.e. my flat at the moment, while we position ourselves somewhere different, so I'm having to book into a hotel. However, in the meantime, let's have a look at what has been a very busy month of fixtures. Well, it was a busy, festive fixture list that saw the clan get off to a terrible start on Saturday the 19th of December. The Sheffield Steelers weren't put off by clan's Christmas jumpers and ran out 5-2 winners. The next night, Clan erased that memory with an excellent 3-1 victory against the league leaders in Cardiff, only the second team to do so this season. Boxing Day, the Clan put four in Dundee's stocking in a tightly contested 4-2 game. It was back to Brayhead for the visit of Belfast Giants on the 27th, Scotty Pitt scoring an exceptional leveller to force the game into OT. However, the cheers didn't last too long as the Giants took the extra point home. Clan didn't have to wait long for revenge. Two days later, Tuesday the 29th, a resounding 4-1 victory for Brayhead in Belfast. Backup goalie Gary Russell with an incredible performance, a result that I enjoyed so much, I stayed there for a few days. Hogmanay and Chris Bruton jams home the winner in another tight Scottish rivalry game. Disappointment greeted the men in purple in New Year as they lost 5-2 over in Fife. But then the very next night, the usual, the regular tonic, beating Cardiff 3-1. New import goalie Travis Fullerton making some big saves before Stefan Meyer popped the puck in the empty net to seal the result. From then on, Clan have gone into a bit of a scoring frenzy. First, a 7-4 demolition of Dundee on the ninth. Captain Keith getting the scoring going. And by the time Meyer scored the seventh, Dundee were already done. The next night in Manchester, the clan weathered an early storm to come away with a convincing 5-2 win. Storm followed the bus back up for the reverse fixture on Friday the 15th, and clan were just as dominant. The pick of the goals coming from some wonderful interplay with Keith and Levitt, making space for big bad Barry McKenzie, in for the suspended Britain, who slots it away. Saturday the 16th, another great result. Incredibly tight game against Coventry. Saw plenty of frustration on the ice. A battle in the blaze crease. But that didn't stop the clan winning 3-0 after two empty net goals. And finally, a good result over Nottingham in the cup. But a chance to make up for that this week coming. Hello, Jerry. Oi! I'm here for the interview. Brooksy, what the what are you doing? I didn't want to leave you alone in this place. What? Oh, but we normally like. Jeez, oh man, we, yeah, we normally give like you a call and we meet you somewhere else. Have you not seen the show before? What are you doing? I'm looking at the necropolis. The what? 50,000 of the wealthiest have been buried there. They opened their gates in 1833. I think we should get ready for bed. Hi, I'm Brennan Brooks, number 49 for the Brayhead clan. Uh, I'm an offensive player. Uh, I like to use my speed as much as possible. Uh, I'm known for having a big shot down the wing, and I uh, just want to go to the net as much as possible and be physical. Is that, is that what you wear for bed? Just get in, Jerry. I can see all your... I can see all your... It's time for bed. <laughs> so, tell us a little bit about your, your first memories of getting into hockey. Well, I started, uh, started at a young age. I was uh, three years old when I started to skate and then uh, joined my first hockey school at four years old with uh, Bruce Brudrow. Four years old? Yeah, it's pretty young. Who got you into it? Who forced you, who uh, forced you in at four years old? I would old? say my dad was a big part. And then uh, after I got going, uh, you know, Bruce Brudrow kind of took me under his wing and was a big part of my hockey career. So when you say like starting skating at three, but you mean at four years old, you've got a stick in hand. Yeah. All the gear, going out there, getting some lessons in. I was, yeah. I was just motoring around at four years old. Jeez, oh. And what was your route into professional hockey then? Um, I started uh, pro hockey at, uh, I was 18 turning 19 in a place called Quad City. Yep, Quad City and, Mallards area. Right? Yeah, and then I had a coach by the name of Paul Gillis who was, uh, used to be the captain of the Quebec Nordiques back when they were in the NHL. Wow. And uh, he was a great part of me and he worked with me and you know, I was really young. The next youngest guy was 25 years old on the team. So he kind of did what Bruce Brujo did and took me under his wing and uh, got me going. Do you feel that had a massive impact then playing with much older players? And Yeah, I think it was a big impact. I had to grow up quick. 
Yeah. You know, I was just a little 18 year old that really didn't have a clue about living on his own or life. And uh, I got thrown right into it and grew up real fast. Wow. And was the aim like, obviously everyone's aim is to get drafted straight yeah. away, but you had a slightly different route towards your NHL contract. So I tell did. us a bit about that. Yeah, I kind of, uh, you know, started in the minors and, uh, you know, each year I'd try to move to a, a higher level of a league and then... Because uh, that's the tough route. Isn't yes. it? That's a tough route. Really, it's the long it? route. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So in uh, 2001, actually, Bruce Brujo was the uh, coach of the farm team of the LA Kings and, and said they, they got me a tryout for the rookie camp. Wow. So I went out for uh, the rookie camp and I had a really good camp and got invited to the main camp and then uh, had another great camp and they offered me my first NHL deal in 2001. And who was the first person you phoned when you got that deal? Uh, my dad was number one, yeah. instantly. Because you saw your parents were obviously over over Christmas, yeah. weren't they? Your dad's pretty much still your number one fan, isn't oh, he? Yeah. He, was, he was absolutely into every game, especially yeah. in Belfast. Yeah, he was. He, uh, he enjoyed everything. He, he just loves hockey and uh, you know, I guess you know, me being his son makes it even better for him. Yeah, I'm gonna. I want to talk about your your dad, your mum as well. Obviously, she's got uh, British roots. We'll come to that in a wee yeah. minute. But obviously, I know um, the the Detroit Red Wings, quite a special team. Yes. To you, aren't they as well? Can you tell us a little bit about how you your affiliation with them as well? Yeah, like growing up, uh, I was a big Steve Eiserman fan, and uh, and then when I got the the call in the summer that uh, I got an offer from the Detroit Red Wings to sign and. It was a no-brainer. I just couldn't wait, and uh, I had to go. Wow, it's such a cool brand as well, the Red Wings, yeah. isn't it? It must have been great. Yeah, have you still got your jerseys and stuff from from that. I do. I got uh, I got it hanging up in my house, so it's uh, it's great. Wowzers. Yeah. And then what led, obviously, kind of coming over to Europe? Then was uh, must have been a big decision at that stage. What what kind of led to that to that decision? You came um, over. Was it was it Switzerland first of all you came to? Or no, it? I went to uh, Norway first. Norway. But it, it kind of happened. Uh, I'd been, you know on the AHL deal for a long time with the NHL mm -hmm. contract and uh, I wasn't really getting the opportunity I thought I deserved at the NHL level and I wanted to change yeah and uh, I got the opportunity right away to go over to uh, Norway and I never looked back I, I loved Europe now was it while you were in Norway because we've mentioned this at a couple of uh, like uh, club events and stuff like that we ended up on a on a, t a TV program, or was it a, kind very of, true. a live kind of uh, celebrity show or whatever? Yeah. Okay, what, what was the show? Because it sounds bizarre. Yeah, it, uh, it, it ended up being the, the top show there in, uh, in Norway. And, and was it just following the team? Yeah, so it was like 24-7 for the entire season. Of, uh, so have you got cameras in your house? Uh, they thing. ended up coming to our house a few times and uh, you wow. know, watched us every day, what we did when we left the arena. And uh, it was a different experience, but uh, I really enjoyed it. Wow. Well, no, so you, this isn't your first television experience? No, recently. no, no, definitely not. No, you've done plenty of TV yeah, before. Yeah. Okay, well, this, this is the first time. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> kind, of, kind of a big deal. Kind of yeah, a big deal yeah, here. A little bit. This is new for me. I've got to say, I've never really conducted an interview in bed like this. This is fairly, No, this is a first. Yeah, it's a yeah. first. And then obviously we'll move on quickly from that. You then uh, had a wee tour around Europe. You get the opportunity to kind of see a few places then, did I you? I did, yeah. I've been in uh, Switzerland. I went after I left Norway, I went to Switzerland for a few years. Mm. Uh, then, I, then I headed over to Germany for a couple. Do you feel the styles in Europe suited you better? I did. I think playing on the Olympic size ice has really uh, been able to show what I'm able to do on the big ice with my speed. And uh, I think it was a great decision for me. Yeah. And then obviously, tell us a little bit about the, the Spengler Cup. Yeah, I got to... In Team Canada, it yeah. must have been a, a, a pretty proud moment. Yeah, when I got the, the call to you know, represent my can, uh, country, uh, it was one of the best feelings. And it really felt as if I, all the hard work I put in as a kid, it, it paid off. And who else was in the team there in that time? Uh, some that might be familiar. A good old fans. boy. Uh, I think we call him the Magic Man. Oh, the Magic Man. Yeah, the, Rick Jackman. Huge, huge Jackman in the team yeah. as well. So yeah, you guys so. go back. So did you? When did you know that you were going to be playing for the same team this season? Uh, I found out uh, sometime in the summer, a little bit, and I gave him a quick call. But he, he's not very good at getting back to guys. So <laughs> I kind of talked to him when we got here, uh, headed over here, and you know it was as if we'd never been apart. So he's a great guy and a good teammate. Yeah, and you also knew, of course, our coach for Infinity as well, didn't yeah, you? You yeah. guys were old teammates. And yeah, he have was... he been bothering you for a while to come over? Uh, yeah, we've talked for a couple of years, you know, to try and get me to come over. And mm. uh, I think this is, this was the year that was right for me to come over. And uh, I think it was a great decision. I'm glad I did. And what kind of differences have you noticed? Do you feel like you've kind of settled into to Glasgow now and, 
in Scottish life, as it were. Yeah, I guess so. You know, I, I really in, uh, enjoy our time here. There's lots to do in Glasgow and uh, some great sights to see. And uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of the city. Was it a big draw, the fact that you're, because your mum originally comes from the UK, doesn't she? Yeah, yeah. She's from Yorkshire originally? Yorkshire, yeah. Wow, so was that like a big kind of draw to kind of come over to the UK at some point? Because your mum seemed pretty delighted when I chatted to that you're over here. I like talking to people's parents, seeing if yeah. they're okay. Yeah, with, yeah. With, with what yeah, you're no, doing. my mum was really happy about it. And, mm. uh, I, you know, it's always been in the back of my mind that one day I was going to play here yeah. in the UK. And, uh, you know, my mum has always said, you know, this is, this is where I was born, you know. So she, uh, she takes a lot of pride in it. And could you still play for Team GB then? I think one day I could. I don't know yeah. how old I'm going to be by then, but, <laughs> I, but I think I can. If they get the rules that uh, yeah. the uh, dual pass players can play. And it doesn't matter that you can, you've can played for Canada and, and various no, competitions? No, I think if I do uh, make that uh, change, I won't be able to play for Canada anymore. Yeah. Because I think uh, once uh, you kind of part ways for... Uh, full citizenship, it changes. You still looking for the call up for Canada then? Yeah, still, I think so. Still you thinking know, positive? I think I'm still ready at 37, why Well, not? there you are, it's a good season so far yeah, anyway. Why maybe. Not? And how are you feeling about the clan this season as well? Connor, suddenly, it's looking pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, I think uh, we're starting to play really well and uh, right from the goaltending out, it's, uh, it, you know, we've stuck with the same guys and it's it's just been working out great. Well, do you know what, that's quite a nice thought. I'm not, I'm not so scared, that's maybe a nice thought to take with us into dreamland. Should I we? Think so. Should we turn out the lights now? I'm not, I'm not quite as scared. Uh, Should we turn the lights together? I'm a bit scared yeah, of the dark a still. Bit. Okay. Well, you, you get your light then. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Three, two, one. It's quite dark, isn't it? It's got this quite a bright moon. I'm a little bit scared of the dark, actually. Yeah. Are we spooning here? No, we won't. Yeah. No, that's not. I'm a little scared. Okay. You know who's not scared of the dark side? No, who? Clangus. Have a look at this. Eh? A Jedi warrior. Is there anything that cow can't do? Right now, it's time for Brooksy. Wake up! It's time for the five puck challenge. You'll like this. Oh. It's time for the five puck challenge. Oh. The players against the clock have to put the five pucks in the goal. They take a two-second penalty if they don't pop it away. Two seconds come off their time if they can hit the crossbar. That's worth a wee idea. Jamie Fritch currently uh, is in pole position, but this week we've got Ben Davis and we have Scotty Pitt having a go. Two very fast skaters. Yeah, good skaters. Yeah. You reckon Real he might good. be able to knock Jamie Fritch off the top spot? Uh, I think there's a chance. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, let's have a look. Next up, we have Scott. If I don't shoot high glove, I don't shoot at all. Pitt. One for one, everyone's taking the same route. Two for two, we're all aiming for the camera now. 
He hit the camera, three for three to four. A quick stop. He's got to get it to go. Oh, almost. Close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. Brings it in at 11.81 with a two second missed shot penalty for 13.81. Second place for Scott Pitt, second place. Jamie Fritch is still in the lead. Next up we have Ben, nobody can understand my Welsh accent, Davies. Three, two, one, go. One for one, taking the same route. Aiming for the camera again, he's three for three. Bringing a lot of speed into number four. Off the bar, he's no good! Four for five, but it looked like a pretty good time. Brings it in at 12.60 seconds with a two second penalty for 14.60, currently in third place. Very surprising, a man at his speed. Well, there you have it, some pretty fast skating there, but still, Jamie Fritch still up there in pole position. You still have to have a go at that, haven't you? Yeah, I think I'm going to try and get her down to 11 seconds. Ah, fine talk, fine oh, talk, yeah, I like that. A little bit. Yeah, yeah. that's good. Competitive. Oh, Joe, I'm glad you're here. I'm, I'm definitely a, little, a lot less scared. There's someone yeah. else, though, I like having chats with, and it's the Incredible Hall. He's always very reasonable to debate with. Chris. Yeah, Jerry. You know that whole glass is half full and glass is half empty thing? I'm aware, yeah. Yeah. Are you a glass is half full person or a glass is half empty person? I like to think I'm a glass is, was once all the way full and now I've drank it to half full. So you're a glass is half full person? I'm, I'm, I'm always thinking that it's full. Would it depend on the beverage? Would it depend if yes, you're... Yes, strongly. You, strongly. Very so strongly. if it was like a Coca-Cola, you would go like glass half empty. No, hey, that's, my, that's half empty for sure. That's half empty. You're like, mm -hmm. my glass half empty. Yeah. But if it was a beer... Oh, half full. 100%. It's half full. Yeah. Like, no, I'm good. I've still got a beer. Is yeah. that, chocolate what, milk. If it was chocolate milk, what would it be? Would it be half full or half empty? Did it come from a Highland cow? The incredible halt there. Good to have you back, Chris. Excellent to have you back. Right, competition time, and we're going to announce last month's winner. The question was, when was curling first mooted to have been played? Scotty Pett, of course, gave us the answer, 1541. The winner, drawn at random on my phone, is Ali Pete at Ali Pete. Congratulations to you, Ali. To pick up your prize, contact alex at brayheadclan.com. Congratulations. This month's quiz, the following question will be, when did Brendan say that the necropolis first opened its its very spooky gates was it a 1833 was it b 1999 or was it c nickerson's beard pretty good day eh? yeah it's pretty good yeah, yeah it's pretty it's not obvious or anything is no, it that? no not even close it's a good quiz so of course remember you get your answers in you have to have the correct answer include at brayhead clan and the link to the show you need all three elements Okay, it's time for the message board and a little look at the fixtures coming up. Okay, first up on the message board, it's um, birthday notification, Sammy Boy 3000, sounds like a robot, would like to wish his dad, John, a happy birthday. Mary Fraz wishes Mark Shields a belated happy birthday. Someone's obviously making up for forgetting a birthday there. Andy McKeever would like to wish McKeever McIver, well, who knows, who knows in this day and age, but Andy would like to wish himself a very happy 21st birthday. Oh, Andy, that sounds very lonely. And finally, Alison Barr would like to wish John Barr a happy birthday. That's on the 5th of Feb when he'll be turning 34. That is ancient, ancient John. Okay, upcoming fixtures this Saturday is, of course, a home game against the Stars and then away the very next night to the Edinburgh Capitals. Edinburgh going through a tough time at the moment. Clan looking to take advantage. Midweek is the second leg of the Challenge Cup against Nottingham Panthers. Friday the 29th, home against the Fife Flyers and then away versus the Fife Flyers on Sunday. What? Hmm? Oh, sick. Good night, Brooksy. 